The world of Don't Starve has a few different maps, three to be exact. The world of Reign of Giants provides a temperate climate, bringing all the dangers of winter, spring, and summer. The world of Shipwrecked provides a lush tropical environment with many tropical dangers, like volcanic eruptions and venomous creatures. And finally, the world of Hamlet provides a more inland tropical experience, equipped with rainforests, lily ponds, and even sprawling cities where you can work for a living. But which of these DLC maps offer the best place to live? In today's video, I plan to find that out, and of course rank them accordingly on this super epic tier list. Before we get into this tier list, however, I do want to make it clear that this is a ranking based on how easy and pleasant it is to live on the map of the DLC in question long term. This ranking does not take into account the added features that each DLC provides, because if it did, there would be a very clear and obvious winner. But now that I have explained that, let's talk a little bit about each DLC map and what we can expect living in them, starting first with the first DLC to grace this amazing game, Reign of Giants. Reign of Giants provides a temperate and balanced experience. Living here provides you with all four temperate seasons, a mild and pleasant autumn, a cold and bitter winter, a wet and rainy spring, and finally one of the worst seasons in the entire game, a dry and spontaneous combustion-filled summer. Each of these seasons besides autumn contains some type of danger. In winter, you will freeze if you don't keep your character warm. In spring, you can experience severe storms that will soak your character, strike lightning around causing fire, and sometimes, rarely, even raining down frogs that will steal your items and be very annoying. And finally, in summer, you will overheat if you don't keep cool. Plants will also wilt and can actually spontaneously combust if the world is dry and hot enough. Now that we have gone over the seasons that this world has to offer, we should go over the bosses of this world as well. The bosses in Reign of Giants are tied to the seasons, and three out of the four of them can pose a major threat to your long-term base. The boss of Autumn is Berger. This guy is an absolute base-destroying machine. Let him get too close to your base and he will go out of his way to make sure everything is gone. The boss of Winter is Deerclops. While being less destructive than Berger, Deerclops is still more than capable of reducing your entire base to rubble. The boss of Spring is Moose Goose. This boss is the only boss that does not result in base destruction. And finally, the boss of Summer is Dragonfly, who will reduce your base to ashes, arguably the worst fate out of all of the bosses. Bosses in Reign of Giants have a 67% chance to spawn each season on default settings. This means that most of the time you will have to deal with a boss at least twice an in-game year. This makes long-term living here slightly more unpleasant. Bosses aren't the only constant danger that exists in Reign of Giants. Periodically, every 7 to 10 days, a hound attack will start. This starts off small and manageable, but we are thinking about long-term living here. And by the time you reach day 100, hound attacks will not only be significantly larger, but special variants will also spawn. Blue Hounds aren't so bad, and will spawn in spring and winter hound attacks. These guys freeze everything around them upon being slain. Red Hounds on the other hand, these will be the bane of your existence. Upon defeat, these guys drop 3-4 to four large fires that can, and will, easily spread. These guys spawn in autumn and summer hound attacks. Hound attacks can of course be mitigated by living in the caves but then you have to deal with depth worms and darkness. Overall, this experience makes living here pretty unpleasant. Now that we got all of the facts out of the way, let's finally talk about what rank we are going to give this DLC map. Reign of Giants is overall a pretty pleasant DLC to live in, surprisingly. There's lots of food sources, and only one of the seasons would be considered uninhabitable, in my opinion, summer. But that issue can be combated with ice fling the bosses can be annoying, but all of them, besides Moose Goose, give you plenty of warning before attacking, meaning you can easily just leave your base and deal with them before coming back. Hound attacks are also pretty rough, but by late game you probably will have Tooth Traps or Elephant Cactus prepared to handle these guys with ease. Reign of Giants is overall a very balanced and enjoyable map to live in, with a huge variety of biomes. For now, 
it gets the habitable ranking. Ah, Shipwrecked. A tropical archipelago that allows you to actually brave the ocean. Shipwrecked provides you with four on-theme seasons. An incredibly pleasant mild season, a dark and gloomy hurricane season, a flooded and rainy monsoon season, and finally, a volcanic dry season. Much like Reign of Giants, each of these seasons besides mild contains some form of danger. Hurricane season comes with incredibly frequent lightning strikes during a hurricane. Monsoon season causes flooding that can render onshore bases inoperable until dry season arrives. And speaking of dry season, it will cause you to overheat. And every now and then the volcano will erupt, causing devastating damage to anything nearby you. Shipwrecked has only two bosses that will bother you without needing to be summoned. Seal Nato, who is the boss of Hurricane Season, spawns the same way as the Reign of Giants bosses, near the end of the season and with a 67% chance on default settings. Seal Nato, while posing a pretty large threat to the player, actually doesn't pose a huge threat to bases, as it cannot break structures. It will, however, pull all of your items into itself, but this can be countered by making chests and not being a slob like I normally am. And finally, there is Tiger Shark. Now, Tiger Shark is interesting. She will spawn with a percentage chance every time you do a certain action, with the highest percentage chance being during monsoon season. Tiger Shark poses a threat to your walls, but otherwise can't destroy structures and is a pretty mild threat. Well, so far so good, right? Unfortunately, the hounds have made their way over here as well, and will attack every 7 to 10 days. That's not all though. Instead of hounds, they are crocodogs. They are identical to hounds except they can also swim. And the most important thing is they can actually be stunlocked. This ability becomes less useful when you get into the larger crocodog waves, however, and unfortunately crocodogs also have seasonal variants. The blue crocodogs will spawn during hurricane season and monsoon season. These guys will spawn puddles on the floor upon defeat, and periodically while alive. This isn't bad during hurricane season as puddles will dry up pretty quickly, but in monsoon season they are permanent until dry season comes. Yellow crocodogs spawn during dry season, and these guys are venomous. Overall, crocodogs are significantly easier threat than Reign of Giants hounds. Flooding can be avoided by fighting blue crocodogs out at sea, and venom can actually be easily cured by waiting it out, or taking anti-venom, or even eating a venom gland. Crocodogs have no base-destroying abilities, although they can plunder fish farms, which is more of a nuisance than anything. Now that we got all of the facts out of the way, let's talk about the ranking we are going to give Shipwrecked's map. Long-term survival in Shipwrecked is unbelievably easy. Mild season is obviously mild. Hurricane season can be 100% nullified by a Dumbrella or a snakeskin hat and a lightning rod, as lightning is the only true danger of hurricanes. Monsoon season can be combated by covering your home island in man-made turf, which will stop puddles from spawning completely. And finally, dry season volcanic eruptions can be stopped by appeasing the volcano altar of sacrifice, which can be easily done with a surplus of eggs. Another benefit of Shipwrecked is its many food sources. Character getting hungry but you forgot to pack food? No problem. Put on your snakeskin hat or umbrella and go grab yourself some jellyfish. Cooked, they provide plenty of hunger. You can also build and stock fish farms. Using some fish from the fish farm and some meat, you can make surf and turf in a crock pot easily. This means both food and sanity are absolutely easy to handle late game. With the low amount of bosses and high survivability, Shipwrecked has to go in the Paradise tier. And absolutely no one can change my mind. Shipwrecked is by far the easiest of all three DLCs. If you disagree with me, leave a comment down below. I am actually curious to hear other people's opinions. If you agree with me, then you should also leave a comment describing how much you love Shipwrecked, because it is, of course, the best map to live on. That brings us to the third and final DLC map to cover, Hamlet. Hamlet is an inland tropical experience. It provides only three seasons that are severely shortened. Temperate season, which is, as the name suggests, temperate. Humid season, which will blanket the world in a thick fog that hinders your movement and visibility severely. And finally, lush season, 
which will cause hay fever in most characters, and spawns brambles, which will block off a majority of the land. Well, what about the bosses? There's actually only one boss that you ever have to worry about surprising you, and that is the Ancient Herald, who spawns during the Apocalypse, a preventable but devastating event. The other destructive bosses, the Iron Hulk and the Pugilisk, must be manually spawned, so pose little danger to your base if you are wise. There is, however, another large base-destroying creature. This is the BFB, who will occasionally land outside of the Pig City and Deep Rainforest. BFB is incredibly hostile to structures placed, and she can and will demolish anything she can see. BFB eventually can be turned off by playing a dark bird whistle, so that threat is primarily locked to early game. What about the hound attacks? Well, actually, Hamlet decided to replace hounds entirely with vampire bats. These guys will attack every four days, unless you are in the apocalypse. Then it's every day. Vampire bats are weaker and somewhat easier to deal with than hounds, and there are no seasonal variants. However, Vampire bats also get distracted easily, and unfortunately, they never despawn. This can be annoying as if a vampire bat attack happens during lush season, many vampire bats may get stuck on the brambles. Then when temperate season comes, they will be released and you will have to deal with all of them at once. This is certainly annoying and is incredibly unpleasant. Also, they use the same AI as the Battalisks from Reign of Giants. And I don't know if you know, but that is probably the most annoying AI of any don't starve creature. They basically will circle around you and slowly become angry at you. It's so awful. Anyways, it's finally time for the final ranking. Now, there is something we didn't go over that is an integral part to Hamlet, the Slanty Shanty. This is a literal player home and is really awesome for aesthetics and survival. There is, however, a reason I did not go over this. If you get a key to the city from the Pig Queen, or even just wear a brain of thought in Shipwrecked, you can build this slanty shanty anywhere. That's right, you can have a home in the paradise of Shipwrecked, making it even better, and making it so that the slanty shanty does not give Hamlet any edge over the other two DLC maps. Another issue is the Apocalypse. While yes, it is easily controlled, it is also just annoying after a while. You have to travel through two ruins to reach the calendar, and set the clock back. This plus the fact that the Ancient Herald will spawn when the Apocalypse start, and the fact that he can destroy and light items on fire, it should come to no surprise that Hamlet is getting the Unpleasant plus Stinky tier. Did I mention the map is literally covered in poop? There's dung piles, dung beetles, and pigs poop in the streets. I mean, dude, imagine how bad this map must smell. No wonder those gnats built their homes here and not in Reign of Giants or Shipwrecked. That is why it also is very stinky indeed. So here we are, the end of the tier list. Don't Starve Shipwrecked is sitting in Paradise Zone thanks to its incredible long-term base potential and pleasant environment. Directly under it, inhabitable, is the world of Don't Starve Reign of Giants. That is because it also has huge potential for a long-term base. However, the threats there have a higher chance of destroying that long-term base. So it's not great, but it's still okay. And finally, in the unpleasant plus stinky tier, you have the world of Don't Starve Hamlet. Despite being one of the best DLCs made, the map is truly an awful place to live long term. Sure, you have permanent growing seasons, but you also have permanent growing seasons in Shipwrecked thanks to Ice fling -omatics. The seasons in Hamlet are just downright awful as well. Ever tried to fight multiple shadow creatures while sneezing? Or fighting a battle while you cannot see anything and are forced to wear certain clothing? Yeah, it's not fun. And that wraps up this video. It was a relatively large project of mine, so if you leave a like, that would be super awesome. Also, if you subscribe and hit that bell icon, YouTube tends to not notify you of future videos. So if you want to be notified every time a new video comes out, or when I live stream, make sure to join the Discord in the description. And if you have an opinion about this tier list, go ahead and leave it in the comments below. I am open to debating any of these rankings. This has been Polar Lotus, and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.